<clears throat> that is around a 2000-ish Schwinn Heavy Duty. And it's heavy. All right, today, guys, we got a Schwinn Heavy Duty, like I mentioned, uh, Taiwan built. You know, nothing, not like an old Chicago Schwinn, but this thing has, you can see heavy duty, heavy duty spokes, heavy duty rims, bulletproof tires, a diamond plate sprocket. It's got the world's most biggest comfortable seat on it. Coaster brake. This thing was designed to stand out and drive through manufacturing plants and be uh, just a beast of delivery bike. But I'm going to take this bike and turn it into a clunker. So come with me into the shop Whoa. and uh, let's get this thing changed around. If you're not familiar with, with what a clunker is, uh, basically it's the, the first mountain bike, essentially. And um, these were, we were, you know, from out in California. These bikes were old Schwinn balloon tire bikes that were stripped down and modified to be able to go off-road and um, go screaming down mountains. This is um, not an old Schwinn, but... It's a perfect candidate because everything on this thing is heavy duty. Like I said, I don't think I've ever seen spokes this fat before. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to put some uh, mountain bike tires on it, get those wheels all straight, you know, straightened up and cleaned, and um, get some proper bars. And this thing's going to be cool. I'm kind of liking this new process of, uh, you know, a good clean, a good, um, you know, polish with some, you know, some rubbing 
compound and the and the you know power wheel there and then a nice little uh, coating of the ceramic coating. It just makes the bike feel great and shine really nice. All right, so to get these Schwinn kickstands out, you have to compress that little metal silver ring in there. There's usually a tool to do this, but you can get away with a crescent wrench. Although the angle of this kickstand just kind of was preventing me from doing it. And I'm thinking, well, what am I gonna do? So I got lucky, put a wrench in there, as a spacer and a compression ring, if you will. And with a lot of effort and pushing and wedging on the kickstand, the little pin got really pull on it. And it finally came out.
the inner tubes in these tires were probably twice as thick as a normal tube. I bet they would never go flat, but they were heavy. It's thick. Now, I've done a few coaster brakes in my time before, but I've never done a Shimano. So this is a little bit unchartered territory for me. I get the concept on how they work. Um, but I don't know, this one kind of was, I was surprised how simple it was, but uh, obviously I, I didn't kind of stumble my way through it. Those are the two brake shoes. And that cylinder is the, the thing that drives back and forth. And of course there's three sets of bearings in this hub. There's two main ones and then there's one on the outside of the kind of that sprocket uh, housing there. But I'm going to give them a good clean. I did leave the grease on the brake shoes themselves, the factory grease, because I didn't know if maybe, uh, I don't know, that was high heat grease or something, but they seemed to work good. And um, I guess if I ever have to go fix it, I can always open it back up and, and fix it. So as you can see here, I, um, I tried to get that, I tried to put the uh, kind of the actuator and the brake shoes in there first before the, the axle, and I couldn't get the seat all the way. So I had to take it back out and get those shoes to line up. There's some, uh, some cams that help, help them, you know, prevent from spinning. So I got that all fixed and shoved back in there. The other bearing in, get that guy lubed up. And then, of course, that th big threaded cylinder there, that's what actually drives that uh, inner cylinder, then pushes the brake shoes against the inner wall of the hub. So you got to make sure that that's all greased up good so it functions it nice and smooth. And this guy just kind of simply twists and threads itself on. And a little more grease for the third bearing. And then finish it off with, uh, with the nuts. If you guys are interested in a build like this, I highly recommend this particular bike. It comes with some really nice Alex rims, thick spokes, nice hubs. Um, the frame is super heavy duty. Um, it's a good solid frame. The only thing I think, you know, after riding it, I noticed it's got a really long wheelbase, which would make it a good, uh, you know, good on the trails. But 
it's not really uh, it's not really nim nimble, I guess, or quick, and it, it's hard to get hard to do a, a manual or a wheelie or whatever on it. So because of the long wheelbase, but I think this thing would be uh, a beast tearing through some some uh, single track, and it'd be a ton of fun. Nice and simple, pure fun bicycle. No gears, no brakes, just one single brake in the back. It's like the simple bike you had when you were a kid. I had these GT cranks and, and sprocket laying around. Um, the bearings were shot on it, so luckily all the bearings and stuff that came off of the Schwinn that I'm working on um, seemed to fit on here just fine and worked perfectly. So yeah, I left the uh, the bearing races in, in the frame and just replaced all the guts onto this crank set here and it um, works like a charm. As much as uh, some of you guys might like that diamond plate sprocket that was on there I didn't really care for it much Being a single, single piece crank, which I hardly ever work on, I've had a, I have a bunch of nice, you know, half inch uh, threaded pedals. Finally, get to use some of those. Now, although that this seat is probably the most comfortable seat, bicycle seat I've ever sat on, I uh, <laughs> it was just. A uh, little overkill for for what I was trying to accomplish here, so I had to put on something still comfortable but um, a lot smaller and lighter.
So there you have it. A 2000 Schwinn heavy duty clunker. This bike will go anywhere you want. Cruise down the trails, up and down the sidewalks, down a single track. I bet you could probably even go tearing down, you know, a steep mountain road or a steep mountain trail and um, maybe even hit some pump tracks or some dirt jumps. I don't think you could ever kill this thing. It's 33 pounds. Definitely uh, give you a workout, but uh, I think it's pretty darn cool. Hope you guys like it. Also, I have a bunch more builds coming up, so make sure you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell because um, there'll be more videos happening. Also, I have a new website, depuseshop.com. I've got some stickers on there, and I'm going to start listing some of my bikes that I've been building. Um, unfortunately, i got to get rid of some of them. So if you like any of them and are interested, um, go check out the website. I may have them listed. And... Um, Hopefully, uh, we'll go to a good home. All right, so see you next next time for the next build.